morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I will follow in an unusual way the previous panel. Um, I have nothing to do with the regulations, and I actually do this in Ovation at the Edge, so uh, uh, bear with me if you see stuff you've ever seen before or that seems strange right now, just don't judge it, just flow with it. Um, I do a lot of talks because I do a lot of work uh, in this space, and uh, I will split my work in three categories, consulting. Uh, in consulting, I explore new market opportunities, I expand them, and then we write applications for them, applications, strategic applications. Then I teach what I'd learned from clients, and then I lecture creating content out of both uh, experiences of learning. Uh, every time I lecture, uh, it takes the audience about 10 minutes to figure out something very simple. Uh, you're going to ask yourselves, where do I know this guy from? I've seen this guy before. Have you seen my keynote at the ICE Summit three years ago? All right, so you don't know me from there, right? You know me from someplace else. So I'll come out and say it. I do look like Robin Williams. <laughs> and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, so that's one thing out of the way. The other thing out of the way is to give you the main, I have three props I'm going to use. And here is prop number one. Prop number one you're familiar with, right? What is it? What does it do? How do you know it works? So this is one of the oldest media for possibility. This is what my keynote is about. It's creating media for possibility. I'm not going to talk about who's creating uh, content, who's creating conduits, who's creating... This is all the same thing. I'm going to use the term media in its most generic sense because new media is technology for some, it's behavior for others. For me, media is the thing that I actualize myself with right now. And I'm actualizing myself through a couple of things right now. PowerPoint, Dreamcatchers, and you. So I was very excited by this report because it has a point saying we need to think outside the box to fully exploit IP at the edges. So it gives me a great introduction. Concentrate on the dot. You see how it's changing color? You know who does this? David Copperfield. David Copperfield did this and made millions of dollars. I do it, and you think it's normal. <laughs> Why? Because you take this technology for granted. So we have grown into, and our clients have grown into the same complacency, and our uh, users are grown in the same complacency. We need to bring magic to people all the time. So I'm going to do a bit of magic, and it is like this. We need to turn some more lights Take this very seriously because uh, I don't want to be sued. You are all mature, right? How many of you are in brand management, advertising, content creation? Excellent. This is content. <laughs> but it contains coarse language, okay? And nudity. So I'm going to start with focus. What I'm doing right now, I'm transforming an audience, so a crowd into an audience. And magic does that. So wonder, how many times are your products, services, or content aware of the fact that they need to create constant magic, or otherwise it's boring? So this is Sasha. Sasha is my son. He loves this series of photographs, by the way. He is now 14. But this is Sasha when he was 19 months old. And when he was 19 months old, he was playing with his balls. <laughs> It turns out that he's 14 and a half, and the last conversation I had with him, uh, he was doing exactly the same thing. So. <laughs> but why is he playing with his balls? And I'm sorry you can't see it because I keep asking for the lights to be turned completely off so you can get the full impact of this gorgeous boy. He's playing with his ball because he can. <laughs> you know the joke with white dogs. Yeah. All right. It's the same thing. So while we are trying to regulate things, just try to understand there are billions of people that don't know we exist, but they have tools to create stuff because they can. So I will talk about three things. My work involves research in three domains. First one is motivation. 
uh, behavior is okay, but behavior is the result of something. If you study behavior, you are already in a competitive space. If you study motivation, understand motivation, you are pre-competitive. So motivation, technology, and business capability. When these three things are aligned, you have what's called a moment of strategic foresight. So my job for large corporations, and it's for large because large corporations have uniquely large problems. Uh, lack of agility uh, is what characterizes the elephant. And uh, Nokia is an elephant, Motorola is an elephant, uh, Unilever, Whirlpool, large companies I consult with right now. So strategic foresight is when you paint a picture of a future in which these three things are aligned. Typical example is Kennedy's speech, I want to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Desire was to put a man on the moon to beat the Russians. A capability was zero and technology was some, you know, the Russians had more than the Americans. So when we paint a picture of the future and we have a couple of questions in the panel uh, assembled here on the stage, the questions refer to answers we will give to a hypothetical situation. But if we give the answers from the perspective of this moment, I'm not sure we are doing a great job in understanding what the future is and how it differs from the present. David Hume says that the supposition that the future resembles the past is not founded in arguments of any kind, but is derived entirely from habit. So I want you to, for this next 55 minutes, forget your habits and absorb everything as if you were a child. It's in this condition of acceptance that plays dominant in life that we will make some progress. So my subject is everything 2.0, which means more than web 2.0. It means everything addressable, everything manageable, everything, the ability of us, our peers, and our uh, children, and fathers and mothers to create, manage, and distribute content everywhere. That changes everything. In my view, uh, the new dream catcher is the iPhone. You may agree or disagree. And your agreement or disagreement comes from a point of experience. If you had experienced the iPhone, you will agree. How many of you use an iPhone? Is it a dream catcher? Like it has this wow thing, right? How many of you use the Blackberry? How many tried uh, the both at the same time and switched? <laughs> uh, three, uh, five months ago, we were given the new Nokia iPhone killer to test, and my colleague in Finland wrote a report which had one page and actually two lines. Just like the iPhone, but without the pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and that follows very well into this needs, wants, desire, and the redefinition of expectations. In my view, the future will only be what we want to reveal next about ourselves. So my first part, I divided this talk into three parts, is about who are we and why do we do the things we do, aside from the fact that because we can. 